before UFC 262, which is taking place at the Toyota Center, which is a very special place in the heart of one Daniel Cormier. Uh, back in October of 2015, you had yes. an epic fight here against Alexander Gustafsson. Uh, and this is one that I know uh, you, you can probably recite everything that huh. happened in every second of that fight. You know, man, it was, it was my first title defense after beating Rumble Johnson um, at a... Uh, in Houston, and you know, this place means a ton to me because I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana, which is very close, but right here, you see us weighing in, and Alex is very tall, and I remember the press conference, Dana saying, um, wow, you saw the size difference. I say it won't matter. And here, as we're about to get done, I lean in and I go, I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you that your neck looks good in that picture? Yeah, I did yeah. look good, I was slim. You know, and, and, and you go, right here, you, you, you go to the walkout, jog to the octagon. Guys, I always jog to the octagon because why wait, right? You've been training so long for this. It's like, now it's time to go show all the work that you've done. And, you know, I felt the love in Houston, all the people that supported me, the people from Lafayette and everything. And, man, it was it was just a fight that I didn't know what to expect because the guy was so talented. Um, I was able to get to a really good takedown very early, right? Uh, he, he's tall. He's very tall. And I, I remember walking in there and going, He's taller than I remember from the way, yeah, right? Yeah. He must have been leading. Yeah. But then as we started to fight, you know, I, I was able to trap him here off of an inside kick. Ch level change, right? I drive into him. I want to take my head to the outside, and I was oh. able to rotate him. A lot of times, guys, this happens because these guys don't know how to fall. Mm -hmm. If you know how to fall, then you just go to yeah. your hands, you know? Yeah. So they actually are, should be credited with some of these takedowns I've had over my career. I had a lot of success here with Alex, just collar tying him with the left hand and just jamming uppercuts into his face but he was fighting back very effectively he actually cut me in round two and took me down twice to win that round here i landed a beautiful lead right hand hook right hand is another combination i threw a lot over the course of the fight alex was all busted up man his lip was cut through the middle my eye had two cuts over the top but he was he was having very difficult time trying to get me off of the collar and I just remember putting a lot of pressure on Alex. Oh. But third round, Man. I was oh, winning wow. the entire round, and Alex landed this crazy knee that dropped me. I grabbed the single leg, was able to get up to my feet and get back into him in order to end the round. But I get to the corner here, and I'm asking Bob, did I win the freaking round? Because I had won four and a half minutes of the round, and then he drops me. And I was like, what is happening? But I'm all beat up. It's round three. You're trying to, like, focus and, and get reset for round four. And um, very close fight, crowd's going crazy. But again, I just constantly was pressuring Alex. Many times he had to like turn his back to run away from me because I just kept staying in his face. I knew that if I just fought as hard as I could, empty the tank, I would give myself a chance, right? So going into round five, I'm exhausted, right? There's no feeling, guys, like a UFC title fight going into the fifth round where it's been that close and competitive. and. Fifth round, he lands a beautiful combination to start the round, right? And I remember thinking to myself, this has to change. I can't be on the outside, he's too long. So then I just started pressuring him again. And I was just in his face, and this is how the fight ended. With us just punching, going crazy, in tight. I was just hand fighting with him like I was wrestling. And then just to throw <laughs> something <laughs> at the end of the fight, right? You see his little legs swing around? I mean, you know, <laughs> it's all about visuals, right? And I mean, Look at it. This was the most gratifying feeling in the world. Rosendo's going crazy. Bob told me after the fifth round, you got that shit, right? I was still questioning whether I did one or not. And I remember the, the first judge saying, 48-47 Gustafson, and Dana goes, wait, what? He looked so like, no, he didn't win. And then one judge said 48-47 Cormier, and then the last judge said 49-46. When they said 49-46, I knew it was me, because I knew there was no way I had lost four rounds to Alex. But you leave a part of yourself in every competition. For the bad feelings between myself and Jones, all these, there is still a part of me that respects and, and truly, honestly, uh, owe a, a debt of gratitude to these guys for stepping in the octagon. And on October 15th, October 3rd, sorry, 2015, Alexander Gustafson and I just truly left every part of ourselves inside of the octagon in Houston. I remember watching James Harden, Dwight Howard, those guys going crazy next to the octagon. And because of that, I did an appearance uh, in Houston, and the fans came out in droves because they remember and they appreciate those types of things. 
because they know what we give them. And that night was, it was crazy. I, I remember my daughter woke up the next morning and she came into the room and I was all beat up and cut. And she goes, what happened to dad? Like she had no idea what happened to me because at that time she was only like four years old. Right. And I was just beat up. But it's those performances, man, those fights that draw the best of you. And those are the things that, like Michael Chandler said earlier, will last a lifetime. And if he can make that moment, something like that tomorrow happen, his boy Hap will never forget the night that his dad became a god. And that's what I did on that night. So when I show it to my children, regardless of how old they get, when, I, when they see those performances, they can say, you know what, my dad so, did something insanely special. I can see how much it, it means to you. It does. Talking about it. And you said Alex made you a better person too. Yeah, he did. And, and you know, he, he lifted me up afterwards. You kiss. We're out there kissing each other. I mean, there's blood everywhere. You're, you're sweaty. And it's like, you look at these dudes, man, and, and you, you just respect them for doing what they, because you don't do this by yourself. Yeah. You can't do that by yourself. You don't get to go to the moon by yourself. You need somebody to elevate you. And uh, Gustafson did, Jones did, Rumble did, Miocic did, Anderson Silva did. All those guys I fought, they elevated me and they made me better in all facets of mixed martial arts and in life. I appreciate it. You got a special guys. bond with those guys. Every too, one of yeah. those guys. Yeah, it's like a relationship. Yeah. Right? We have we have a special bond. Like we're we're bonded together forever. And